50 years ago, secret biological warfare trials were carried out in the skies and on the streets of East Anglia without the public knowing. So alarming are our discoveries that tonight's programme is an Inside Out special. Were three deaths from cancer in this woman's family the result of spraying cadmium from military aircraft? I really put it down to the cadmium being dropped and uh, it was settled into the soil. It was top secret, it mustn't be told to the people what was happening. I think it does matter, you know, in terms of the health of people that they know that this is being uh, inflicted on them. We came to the conclusion that no one is likely to have come, suffered any harm from the amounts of zinc cadmium sulphide they might have encountered even in a worst case scenario. In the 1950s, as the Cold War escalated, there were fears that Britain, as an exposed, vulnerable island, could be devastated by a biological or chemical warfare attack. In readiness for possible war, people living in vast areas of Bedfordshire, Norfolk and the East Coast became guinea pigs in covert defence experiments. Inside Out disentangles the facts from the deceit to reveal a disturbing chapter of secret history that may prove to be at odds with the official line. A chemical concoction comprising cadmium was used to mimic how a biological germ cloud would spread if Soviet Russia released one during an attack on us. Rural Bedfordshire was sprayed from aircraft and more shockingly from a converted lorry. The city of Norwich was hit over a sustained period. The Ministry of Defence have consistently said there was no significant health risk as a result of the experiments. I uh, used to work in the cancer field and I always knew that cadmium you know, was uh, a deposit in your body that you oughtn't to have. Why they chose cadmium, why they did the whole test, you know, is a mystery to me. In 1963, Norfolk was first sprayed with this chemical. At the time, Yvonne Jarman lived on Halvergate Marshes near Great Yarmouth. There was no history of cancer in her family before then. First of all, my mother had esophageal cancer and she died with it. And then my sister, she had esophageal cancer and she died with it October 2005. And then my brother, he died with it. And this was earlier this year. And now I've got it. Do you believe then that Halvergate could have a higher concentration of this cadmium because of its position and, and where the wind would have blown uh, the zinc cadmium sulphide at the time of the tests? Well, I don't know if it could have been any more there, any more than it is in other places, but I'm pretty sure that Halvergate had its fair share. Inside Out has delved deeper into this story. Not only have we discovered that scant regard was paid to the safety of these experiments, but that there were highly questionable ethics involved. What would happen quite often is a plane will fly off the coast, started at Cromer, flew down past Lowestoft, down the east coast, and then along the English Channel, always spraying zinc cadmium sulphide all the time, quite large quantities of it, at least a pound a mile. Some of these particles will get stuck in the sampling units. The sampling units are then taken away, they're studied, mainly by having a fluorescent light played onto them, and the individual particles of the simulant are then counted by a scientist. These open-air biological trials might never have come to light if it wasn't for people like Mike Kenner. Styled as an open government campaigner, Kenner has made full use of the Freedom of Information Act to obtain access to locked away government files. He's unearthed some startling facts about what went on in East Anglia. But there's one secret that has turned Kenner's investigation on its head. Recent document has come to light from Porton Down which shows that they didn't check this substance for toxicity prior to the spraying or indeed even afterwards. The former important scientist who investigated this in 1999 was quite surprised that no one had bothered to uh, research on how this would affect the public. This is a copy of the official report. It acknowledges that cadmium is a poisonous heavy metal, but it was not tested for its toxicity prior to the experiments. Alarmingly, this was admitted to be a deficit. Normally, 
a substance used by Porton Down, especially in a public area, would be subjected to a toxicity test. This toxicity test uh, would mean that the substance was given a unique T number. The zinc cadmium sulfide has no T number. No one appears to have looked into the ramifications of breathing this substance in, especially in the size that they sprayed it in between one and five microns, which obviously means that it gets deep into your lungs. The Ministry of Defence invited the Academy of Medical Sciences to review the evidence after it became public knowledge that these trials had taken place uh, between 53 and 64. It became public knowledge they had been taking place, concern was expressed, and they wanted an independent scientific body to go over the evidence and to advise whether anybody is likely to have come to any harm. And what did you conclude? What did you deduce from the evidence? We looked at all the evidence that was available to us and we came to the conclusion that no one is likely to have come to suffered any harm from the amounts of zinc cadmium sulfide they might have encountered even in a worst case scenario during this period. The amount of cadmium we're exposed to anyway by which is released by industry into the atmosphere is, is very much greater than anyone was exposed to from this, even those who were in the areas who were maximally exposed. Inside Out has discovered that the Lackman inquiry didn't take into account any of the ground level trials done at Cardington. Some of the national records weren't available to Professor Lackman at the time. We have now seen the missing documents and these show that there were more trials but they were never officially reported. We do not have a detailed account of the land release at Cardington. We have them from Bewley but you've just shown me some figures and the the highest figures at Bewley were much higher. So the calculations made at Bewley um, are more pessimistic than those would be made from the figures you've just shown me. The scientists in the back of the lorry were, were dressed in full protective clothing, yet just a few feet away in the villages, the lorry passed through. People would have been exposed to quite a lot, wouldn't they? I, I do not know the details of exactly how this was done. I don't suppose they did it in built-up areas. I don't imagine they did it where there were people about. But I don't know. And you probably, you may have more descriptions of that since this particular document wasn't available to us at that time. We weren't asked to consider whether this was an efficient way of predicting biological warfare. Um, but if you ask me just as an uninformed observer, I, I think this was actually a very sensible way of doing it. They were very similar to the trials that were done in the United States at the same time. So what is safe exposure to a poison? In the States, the trials in the 1950s and 60s were more openly known about, and there were people prepared to speak out against toxic spraying in public places. An environmental professor, Art Spomer, became concerned about the deliberate exposure of cadmium to humans. Professor Spomer told his superiors about the potential risks of open air spraying, but initially he was ignored. It was only when he published a scientific article that anyone took any notice. Spomer's article was based on medical research into cadmium poisoning done as early as the 1930s. It was known then that cadmium entering the human body in any dosage or concentration was harmful to health. Inside Out tracked him down to his home in Illinois and he agreed to talk to us. Professor Spomer, do you still stand by what you wrote about the effects of inhaling cadmium? Yeah, I don't think anything has changed since that. Uh, yeah, I'm not a medical person, but and I don't directly follow that literature, but I, I, I don't think anything's changed. Do you think the fluorescent particle trials should have ever taken place in the UK? I, I have no idea why they did them, because they had better ways to study what they were trying to find out. And uh, so I'm not quite sure why they, uh, you know, I think it was an unnecessary hazard to expose people to, these, to this material, whether they knew it was toxic or not. Do Although you again, you know, they should have known cadmium Cadmium is you know, known for a long time to be toxic. Should zinc cadmium ever be inhaled or, or ingested into the body? No, no, not, not, not intentionally. Yeah, no. you well, that, I, th that. I think the, the, the main issue as far as we're concerned was the frequency as yeah. to uh, how many times this was done. And this, this van went round the village lanes and, and sprayed sometimes five, six times a day from the, from the top of the van. Oh my God, yeah, well, um, I, it's, it's stupid science. Uh, and uh, if in this case where you if they particularly if they had some knowledge of the toxicity of the material you know it, it's probably criminal there just isn't any evidence and it isn't that people haven't looked so I mean 
he can say what he likes um, until he produces some evidence to the contrary. Um, this is uh, this is typical of a particular kind of argument to raise anxiety. The population of Norfolk, the population of, around Bedford, in in fact the whole east of uh, of England, could still be at risk from future experiments, which the Ministry of Defence refused to rule out. There's more background to this story on our website, bbc.co.uk slash inside out. Next week, a network inside out special on the rise of Eastern European immigration. And in two weeks, another chance to see Heidi's story of hope in America. We'll be back for a new series in January when we move to a Wednesday night. Keep your surprising stories coming from all the team. Bye-bye.